Today we are going to be installing a DVD drive into a computer. For those of you who don't know, this is the new gaming PC build that I've been working on on this channel a lot, and this should be a relatively simple procedure. Famous last words. Let's get into it. And let's literally get into it. So, let's take this computer over here, and let's unscrew the back, or the side plate, unscrew the screws on the side plate. Now, for those of you guys who saw the video of comparing the, um, what is the difference, what is the benefits and the drawbacks of a hard drive that is 80 gigabytes versus a DVD drive, we basically went back and forth and discussed them back and forth, and we're like, which do we choose? Well, I chose the DVD drive, and the reason for that is because I need a recovery disc for this PC. Um, but before we talk more about that, we should figure out how to get in here. So, this thing over here, the DVD drive goes in the uh, the top up here. In order to get up there, in I think it was in the manual I was reading, they say you need to take the front plate off. Let's go ahead and turn this around so that you can see it a little bit better, but we've got here, the uh, the front plate is, the drives go in here in one of these two slots, the blue outline slots, and the plate has to come off, you do something at the bottom of it over here to get it off. If you see down inside here, okay, turning the computer upside down, that may or may not be a good idea. Well, everything's anchored in there, so it's probably fine. Um, okay. So you can see that there is a bit of a place you can grab in here. Uh, but how exactly... Oh, there's like a little clamp thing inside here that I can see. Um, let's see if we can see that on camera. It'll have to be... Well... Let me just turn it around so that you can hopefully see that. Wow, there's a lot of turning the computer backwards and forwards. And then we'll get more into why it chose the DVD drive later. But if you can sort of see that, possibly there's a little clamp thing in there. So I'm going to try to take this thing off and spin it one around once again. This might as well be a merry-go-round. <laughs> okay, here we are. Now let's go ahead and try to get this thing off. So... The reason for ultimately choosing the DVD drive is because, as I said in that video, it... Does this thing have to slide upwards or something? Or downwards? Uh, hmm. It does not want to come off. Um, the... Yeah, as I said... Oh! There's another clamp thing over here. Um, as I said in that video, I need a recovery drive for this computer. And the hard drive could be used as that, except that it will be the only thing that it is used for. Okay, it came off a little bit. I don't know if you can see that in that corner. Eh. So, probably better to put in... Okay, it's one of those um, springy, springy clamps, you know? Like, you have your hole there, and the clamp goes through the hole and stretches out on the other side. It's one of those kinds of things. So let's go ahead and... But, yeah, that's the, that's the situation. If I use the DVD drive to create a recovery DVD, then, wow, that's hard to get off. Either that, or I'm out of shape, which is quite possible. So, okay. There we go, that's one corner off, if you can sort of see that in there. I don't know if you can see that very well at all. Let me try to get some more light on the subject and <laughs> not put the light right in the way of the camera. That would not be very helpful either. Um, <laughs> okay, let's try this again. Let's try something like something like that. There we go, let's try that. Okay. So yeah, at least with the DVD drive. Um, now you guys might be wondering why are you making a recovery DVD? You can make a recovery USB stick. You can make uh, all kinds of things. Let's just make sure there's no wires in there that we're going to... Okay, there's no wires in the bottom of the case. There are some wires in the top half of the case uh, cover, so we should be careful of those. But... Let's get... Okay. Um, whew, that, that thing does not want to come off. This is the first time 
taking the front cover off. And wow, it does not want to come off. Okay. Okay. Let's try this again. All right, let's go ahead and do this. So, you can use a USB stick as a recovery drive. The drawback of that is that I don't have a USB stick of a uh, large enough capacity. That's basically the drawback. Whew, wow. That does not want to come off. Well, let's work on this clamp then, if that one does not want to come off. Let's try to push it through the inside. That might help. Ooh, okay. Hopefully this is what we're supposed to be doing, is taking this thing off. I would have thought you can just pop the thing out of the front, but for some... Let me just read the manual. Let me just double check the manual. That would be, uh, Rosewell menu, manual. Over here, okay. So, what it says is table of contents, disassemble chart, dis disassemble chart? Why would you want to disassemble the chart? Um, oh, a disassembly chart. That would make more sense. <laughs> um, okay, yes. So you can, in fact, disassemble the front pan... Well, not disassemble the front panel, but you can take the front panel off of the rest of the case. In theory. <laughs> in theory. Uh, how does it say to install DVD drive? The installation guide of the motherboard. Put some screws in, things like that. Pull outwards from the bottom of the front panel to remove the front panel. Okay. So, let's go ahead and proceed. Let's go ahead and proceed. So, different ways to make a recovery drive. And I made one once before, um, in order to get the software on this thing in the first place. Let me turn this thing around like this and try from here. In order to get the software on this thing in the first place, I had to make a drive on the Mac because I don't have any Windows machines except for some... Except I think we have one Windows 95 machine left, but it's not very helpful for this task. Okay, um... And it would be... Oh! <laughs> okay, accidentally got this one undone. Accidentally got this one undone. Um, but this one still has not come undone. Does the back plate have to come off? That is a good question. Let's double check that because the back plate is where all the um the the the, the cable management has gone in there, which basically means that the cables are all going to fall and make a mess and then I'm going to have to try to coil them back in and stuff like that if the back plate comes off. Um okay, where exactly would that connect to? That would connect to over here. That would connect to over here, and this clamp, this clamp here is the closest thing, but it does not appear to be big enough to cause any issues. So, let's go ahead and try this again. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and pull on it some more. The trouble is now that this side has come out, this part of the trouble, I'm going to turn it this way, um, not catch it on the wires. Now that this side has come out, whenever I pull on this, it's pulling this side more, and this side's not really coming much, so the bottom side there, or the um, right side, or the left side, depending on which way you have the computer turned around. Anyways, let's try to... Okay, um, can I reach inside here and find the clamp inside here? Oh, yes, the clamp is... It's hard to get... It's hard to get fingers in there, but let's try to pull it from the outside, not hit the fan with the the hand. Actually, that's impossible to do. <coughs> Excuse me. That's impossible to do because there's a metal plate in the way, so that's okay. Um, but... <sighs> Whoa. <sighs> okay. Well, we are taking a break from that task. Um, a recovery disk. Yes, so I tried a bunch of different things. I had to use a recovery disk, and what I used was a hard drive, a 110 gigabyte hard drive, in order to get the um, the Windows software on here in the first place onto this computer. But once it was on there, I wiped the 110 drive, and then I set it up as a backup disk, used it as a backup disk, and then I was um, for about an hour, <laughs> or two, or three hours. Anyways, it wasn't very long. Um, so then, I was like, okay, I need a recovery disk because I'm about to be 
playing around with Windows a lot and probably breaking the system, <laughs> breaking the system by messing up with settings and things like that. So I need a recovery disk, and so I'm like, okay, what options do I have? You can make a DVD. There is no DVD drive in the machine right now. You can make a USB stick, but you need one bigger than eight gigabytes, and I don't do not even have an eight gigabyte stick. So that was out of the question. So, I could make the 110 gigabyte external drive into, into, all right, let's give this a shot again. Um, uh, let's tilt it upside down this time. Might help. Um, I was going to turn the 110 gigabyte drive into a recovery disk, which basically means, for those of you guys who don't know what a recovery disk means, it means if your entire hard disk messes up, you can use that recovery disk to get a basic software of something that will get you started again on installing Windows is essentially what a recovery disk does. <laughs> wow. Okay. This thing is hard to get off. To be fair, it uh, it may just be my own uh, my own finger strength because when I was working on the computer build with Brian, he did something in there I don't remember what it was that he did, but something that, like, he had to pull apart or push in or something, and he just, like, did it just easily like that, and I tried to do it afterwards because I had to redo a couple of things, and it, uh, it was very hard to do. Apparently, he's a lot stronger than I am, so it may just be that I'm not strong enough to do this task, but we shall see. We shall indeed get it done one way or another. Okay, but in any case, so I was like, okay, the, so the 110 gigabyte hard disk that was currently being used for backup was currently, if that's proper English, let's make a recovery partition on that disk. So I set up that disk, installed the recovery partition, found out that it re erased all of the other partitions. It might have told me that I, that it was going to do that. I do not know. Oh, got it. Oh, got it! Yeah, that's exciting. Okay, um... Yeah, so it erased the backup side of the disk, so that was not helpful, so I had to redo it to put, um... to put the backup part back on the disk. Set the disk back up with the backup stuff. Anyways, so that was that, and... Then... What happened after that? Wow, I'm tired now. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so then I reset it up as the backup disk and uh, kind of was out of options for what to do unless this DVD thing works. So let's see. Now, here's where we run into a problem. There are two pins up here. We need to take this side off. However, there are cables running into the front panel because of all the USB ports and things. And so... They need to be extended or something. Um, I need to give them a little bit of room. A little bit of room to work with. And once they have enough room to work with, I'm going to pop the panel off. Hopefully not too hard so that the cables come out, which would not be very good. Um, and then I might have to detach the cables. I think they plug in over here. We can see. We're taking off the front panel of the case. And we shall see, <laughs> we shall see how it goes. We shall indeed see how it goes. All right, this should be easier because we have some leverage. Okay, there we go. We got this thing off. As you can hopefully see if the camera picks that up very well, there are some cables on the front there. How long have we been recording for? 15 minutes, okay. Um, yeah, because the camera is low on space as well. Um, we've got a whole bunch of cables there. Do they... It looks like they do unplug, but it will be difficult to do. So I would prefer to pull through more cable or pull more cable through. Let's unplug the, uh, what's that? That is USB. Let's unplug the front USB. And by the way, before doing anything in the computer, always remember to unplug it from power or turn off the power supply and stuff like that because you don't want to be, uh, Having difficulty with... Wow, now I can't get a simple uh, simple USB port out. <laughs> um, but yeah, you do not want to be... Um, 
having power running through the machine while you're playing around with things like this. Anyways, let's go ahead. That cable is now out. We also need the white cable to be a bit longer, and then we shall not unplug them, hopefully not, from the front of the case. But shall... Whoa. Okay, let's get this one out. Um, If you guys want to see more info about this motherboard, what kind it is... Uh, it's basically, it's a ASRock B450 Pro 4 motherboard. I did an unboxing video, which will be out on the channel before this video, most likely, unless I completely mess up the, uh, the timing on the upload scheduling and stuff like that. Anyways, let's go ahead and get this through. Mess up the cable management a little bit, but not too badly because the cables are still going the right direction. Cable management just basically means that you move the cables out of the way so that it doesn't block the airflow. So it's nothing, uh, nothing really fancy about that. So, there we go. I do believe that we have what we need to be able to turn this out of the way. And we should indeed be able to install the disk drive in there. So, here is, there, no it's not. Where's the, oh there it is. There's the extra camera. Here's the extra camera so we can get a close-up so you guys can see what this thing looks like with the front panel off. Let's go ahead and enter video recording mode. There we go. So inside the front panel is... Inside the front panel is that uh, that over there is the back of the front plates, which do have to come out. And then inside here is just basically a giant... Um, a giant space for disk drives to go in and it has two tracks for them to go along. So, let's go ahead and get that done. We went to all the trouble of getting the front of the case off. We are not going to give up until the task is accomplished.